previously, we looked at the Russian Revolution and the rise of uh, the Communist Party in Russia. And today we're going to look at the outcome and the building of what becomes known as the Soviet Union. What we want to look at and our goal for the day is to uh, examine the events that led to the rise of Joseph Stalin and his totalitarian policies in the Soviet Union. Okay. But before we do so, a little bit of background, sort of the, the big picture of why the Soviet Union is created in the first place. And a lot of it has to do with, is the Soviet Union and communism a solution to poverty? Okay. The question that uh, many reformers in the late 18th 19th and 20th centuries uh, wrestled with was how do you solve the problems of the Industrial Revolution? Okay? Is it through what we call private charities? Okay? Should the ability of individuals to earn their own keep okay, be the key way by which people will lift themselves up uh, out of poverty? And is it by private will, individuals giving through charities the primary means of okay, helping the poor? Or perhaps should it be a public issue whereby a, a government or a, a large group collectively comes together to make a decision and say, hey, hey we want to redistribute resources. And in that case, how much resources? Okay? Who should uh, be uh, owning property in these particular societies? Should everyone have a piece of the pie or do you earn your own keep? These are key questions as to hey, whether or not uh, individuals should give up of their resources for the greater good. And in the cases like Russia, China, and other states, these are agrarian states. They're not even industrial states just yet. And so uh, there is an added problem as to the number of people who are poor in the countrysides as well. And so in the late 19th, early 20th century, many people saw that capitalism and democracy uh, by the excesses of the Industrial Revolution, whereby there's so many poor workers who are being exploited by the wealthy industrialists. And not only that, but the deaths um, that came about as a result of the First World War, where many saw the war as a war created by the world's industrialists and fought by the urban poor. And so as a result of this, okay, this all came to blows in Russia and the Russian Revolution, which we looked at previously. Okay. The Bolsheviks and the communists would eventually overthrow the czar and the provisional government and create a civil war. Okay, and not only that, but a series of famines that would kill millions of people across Russia and surrounding regions as well. But in the end, the Red Army and the Communist Party ends up winning to create what is known as the Soviet Union. Okay? And this Communist Party, so a small percentage okay, of this particular population, this elite party is created to try to create the first communist state, okay? whereby they're going to try to redistribute a okay, part of the okay, state, if not all of state resources, for the betterment, so they say, of the entire country as a whole. Okay? But it could not happen overnight. Okay? And so Vladimir Lenin, the leader of the Communist Party, okay, knew that he couldn't just simply flip and overturn Russian society in one felt swoop. And so what he created was what is known as the new economic policy. In other words, he's not going to dismantle private ownership and private property okay, and a private industry all at once. Instead, he's going to do it gradually. Okay? A little bit of the market here, a little bit of the market there, okay? but he's not going to seize a uh, material from everyone just to create this new society. It would, um, because people at this point were dying from famine and others, it was too quickly to make this drastic change. Okay? Um, and so, despite this uh, setback here, Russia is, needs to not only a uh, shift from an agrarian society into an industrial one. But once all of these workers are created, can they redistribute property such that everybody truly is equal? Lenin, unfortunately, doesn't get the chance to fulfill his own mission okay, in that he suffered a series of strokes in the early 1920s. And by the mid 1920s, uh, Lenin has passed away. Okay. There is no succession plan initially. 
Uh, and many actually thought that uh, Lenin would actually select uh, this man right here. This is Leon Trotsky, the commander of the Red Army and probably Lenin's um, most close associate one of his closest associates would end up taking over. But instead, it's the secretary, the general secretary of the Communist Party, a man by the name of Joseph Stalin, who would eventually seize power in the Soviet Union and become the sole dictator. Trotsky eh, was supposedly eh, the key uh, man in winning the revolution and also may have been the next leader. However, Stalin ended up outmaneuvering him uh, Trotsky ended up fleeing the country and was eventually assassinated in Mexico by perhaps uh, Stalin's assassin. What Stalin implemented uh, was an immediate shift to public ownership and rapid industrialization. In other words, he's going to use as much of the instrument of his country as possible uh, to industrialize as fast as he possibly can. Uh, and the group that would uh, suffer the most would be perhaps those who are farmers, those who are uh, in agriculture. It's their resources eventually that would be seized and taken for the benefit of industrializing uh, Russia. And then from there, supposedly, uh, goods and resources would be redistributed across the country such that there would be no poverty. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But what Stalin does create is a system of totalitarianism where he controls almost every aspect of the state. And he does this through the creation of a cult of personality, whereby by his orders and his personality, no one is going to challenge what he says or does. And so that leads us to the question in terms of a true revolution. How do you force people to give up? of their old lives, of what they have, of their hard-earned money, resources, and get people to buy into a revolutionary program whose aim supposedly is to create a more equal society. In some ways, people bought into it, and we'll see through the cult of the personality, propaganda, and others how. But in other ways, it's just simply by sheer force and violence. So let's start off with the notion of the cult of personality. For instance, here's Stalin. Say Stalin himself, uh, he frequently had in, in films that he created a, a body double okay, um, that uh, perhaps may have been more handsome than he was or uh, more charismatic, at least in film. That's at least one way to be able to do it. Okay? Um, others is to just simply to change history. In other words, you made what people said about you in the past fake news. And here's a great example of this uh, in the early 1920s style. Here's a, a famous revolutionary picture of Lenin right here okay, uh, and Trotsky together side by side uh, as if they are, uh, as Russia is turning into the Soviet Union, working together hand in hand. Stalin, however, is nowhere to be seen in this picture. After Trotsky is seen as a, a traitor, a, this particular picture was altered such that Trotsky is gone. He's missing, as if he never existed as Lenin's right-hand man, therefore allowing people to see Stalin, perhaps, as the man who would be in that particular role. Okay. Uh, some other examples. Uh, many uh, would be assassinated by Stalin because of their resistance or what they said, or maybe Stalin didn't like them at all. Here's a man named Nikolai Yezov. There's Stalin. Later on, Yezov is gone. He's missing completely. This one's my favorite here. Hey, so here's Stalin. I don't know what this guy did to anger Stalin. Perhaps he actually said to Stalin, hey, Mr. Stalin, come this way. And Stalin says, hey, nobody tells comrade Stalin what to do. Maybe. Hey, but either way, the, uh, what you're going to read about and you're going to watch is the rise of the Soviet Union and how Stalin uses sheer force and cult of personality, okay, the exploitation of millions of poor farmers in order to create successfully an industrial society in the Soviet Union. Okay, and such that by the 1930s, okay, while the rest of the world is going to struggle in uh, during the Great Depression, as it turns out, 
communism in the Soviet Union survives, not just survives, but grows in the 1930s. And the Soviet Union becomes a global power as a result. So we're going to take a look at this in greater detail in two parts here, a film called Stalin, Man of Steel, and also our chapter and reading where you're going to create a graphic organizer.